Hello everybody, Dan here with TrendSpider, and I'm making a video today to show you a brand new feature, something we've been working on for a very, very long time, and something that I'm very personally excited for that we've just added to the platform called Trading Bots. Now, as the name implies, a trading bot is an automation workflow that you can now create by just pointing and clicking inside a TrendSpider. It used to be that for a retail trader to be able to automate at this level, they would have to be a software developer also. No more, now anybody can build an automated trading bot using TrendSpider in just a matter of minutes. Let me show you how that works. So the first thing you're gonna to need to know is every trading bot is based on a strategy from the strategy tester. So I'm gonna open the strategy tester up at the bottom of my screen, and I'm gonna select an example that I created earlier called Dan EMA bot. This is a very simple set of instructions. It tells the bot to open a long position when the EMA five crosses up through the EMA 11, and it tells it to close that position when the EMA5 crosses back down through the EMA11. Very, very simple. If you click run in the strategy tester, as you probably already know, it's going to look back 7,000 candles, which on this time frame is about a year, and it's going to calculate what would have happened if you bought and sold using these exact entry and exit conditions going back that entire period of time. It'll then let you know with these fancy charts how that strategy would have performed. You can see this strategy, while not great, it does outperform buy and hold. So let's see what happens if we try it on a different symbol by just changing, and let's see if we like this strategy as a whole. If we do, we can then take this strategy and turn it into a trading bot. And you know, I'm not saying that I really like it, but let's pretend I do and let's get into that. So now that we have the strategy selected and a symbol that we want to run it on selected, all we have to do is click launch as a trading bot. I'm going to click this button and it's going to open the bot configuration window. This lets me give it a name. For example, I can call this example bot. And it lets me select a strategy. But since I started with the strategy tester to create this, the one I was working on already is pre-selected. Also, since I started in the strategy tester, the bot will inherit the time frame that the strategy ran on. So the strategy was tested on the 15 minute time frame. So 15 minutes is a time frame that's added to the bot as well. You of course can change this if you need to. It's very easy to do, but this is how it sets it up by default when you click create a trading bot from this strategy. You're going to notice when you do this, it also gives you a little timestamp here. This is important to keep in mind because every bot, because it's based on a strategy, needs to start that strategy's computation at a certain point of time. So when you start a strategy and convert it into a bot with TrendSpider, it's going to compute how far back it needs to look and it's going to display that there. So now that we've given it a name, selected a strategy, configured a time frame, now we get to tell it what to do when an entry or exit signal with this bot comes uh, to light. Now, this is something that you need to understand is very flexible. A trading bot does not have to actually place orders. It can, but it can do all kinds of different things. You can use this to create a workflow that connects to outside systems. You can have it post to a Slack channel. You can have it post to Twitter. You can have it post to a private Discord channel. You can have it just SMS you, or you can have it connect to an outside order routing system, and it can send a command to buy and sell in a brokerage account or crypto exchange account. So there's a lot that a trading bot can do. It's not just about opening positions, although we do anticipate a lot of people will use it for that. So let's dive into these options a little bit. First, obviously, we can have it notify us via SMS, which is a text message, or via an email. All we have to do is check those boxes, and it will do that. Next, we can have this connect to an outside webhook. This is where all the fancy stuff I was just talking about starts out. For example, if we want to set this bot up so that it will post to a Slack channel, we can first copy and paste the Slack webhook address, right? And then we can put in a command to tell the bot to do something and to tell that Slack server uh, to do something whenever this command goes off. So since we're on Nike, we just change a symbol here. And then we can put the same command here and we can say bot says sell Nike. Now, every time this particular strategy triggers an entry or exit, it's going to notify me via SMS. It's going to send me an email. It's also going to connect to the server that I put in here, right? And it's going to send them the payload, the command that is in this box. Now, what you need to understand is every single system on the web can, ex for the most part, can accept a webhook symbol or uh, signal. Right, so there are the webhooks uh, receiving endpoints in almost every application out there, be it Twitter, be it Zapier, be it Slack, be it a very one of the many order routing tools out there. So all you need to do to configure this is go to the documentation of the system you are sending the signal to, 
and copy and paste and read their instructions. Many of them will have a way for you to generate a specific URL for the webhook, and many will have a specific format for the body or the payload, as we call it. But the point I'm trying to get across here is that this is extremely flexible. You can have this do all kinds of different things. And it's not just what the name implies of trading, but it can be notifying you doing different things with the groups of people, et cetera. So, okay, let's move on. Next, we need to tell it what to do if something goes wrong, right? We call these control notifications. And you can configure these to be very verbose, where you're gonna get a lot of messages from the system, or critical only. If you have it set up for critical only, it will let you know only when something goes wrong. If you have it set up for verbose, it's gonna tell you every time it checks the conditions in the market. You can configure how to be notified separately than your entry exit notifications. So you can either turn control notifications off or you can just say, email them to me, don't text them to me, but text me every time an order is actually placed. You have that flexibility. Next, we need to tell the system, tell the bot what to do in case something goes wrong while the strategy is running. So this is a lot of flexibility that you have. Because this is a new feature, it's labeled beta at the top there, a couple of these options aren't available yet, but they will be added very soon. So if you're looking at it when watching this video and you see that there are drop-down menus there, it means that this video is just made a little bit before the, the full version of the feature was released. It gives you the option to configure what happens if a webhook fails. This means uh, giving you the choice to have it retry or to do nothing right, or to uh, uh, do something else. So you'll have a drop down menu there where you can select what happens. You can also tell the bot what to do if an entry webhook fails or an exit webhook fails. And you'll notice that there's a couple different options here, right? If you select notify, but assume manual entry, it will let you know that something failed in the bot, but it will also assume that you manually went ahead and took the trade yourself. If you select notify and stop bot, it will notify you and stop the bot. This gives you control over the behavior of what happens if something goes wrong while this bot is running. Lastly, there's an option for what to do if when the bot starts, it is already in a position. What you need to understand is every bot is based on a strategy. And when you start a bot in the background, the system will calculate the strategy. So it will know if there should be an open position at this moment in time. The example that we have on this chart here is one such that it ended on an open position, meaning the exit signal did not yet trigger. We are still long as far as this bot is concerned. So what should this bot do in this situation? Well, we give you a choice. You have the option to have it immediately enter. That's called generate entry signal immediately. And that means it will jump in right away. The minute you press create bot, it will notice the condition should be true, that you should be in a trade and it will enter the trade instantly. Um, and it will do whatever you configured higher up on the bot configuration screen at that point. Or you can have it generate the next entry, the first entry signal after the next signal. If you select that, it will wait for this particular position to close. So it'll wait for the exit signal to occur and then it'll wait for the next entry. And at that point, it will jump in and create the strategy for you and start running it with the real market. So that's how you can take any strategy from the strategy tester and turn it into a live bot. Let me show you a couple other things that I think are important about this. So first, we have a sidebar widget used to manage your bots. So when I click here and go to add remove widgets, I can add a very special sidebar widget called trading bots that will now appear on my screen. And you can see here a list of all the bots that I have created that are stopped right now, that are currently running, et cetera. It's a complete list that you can control and remove things from if you choose from. So let's scroll down and just take a look at these, right? Each of these represents a bot that was running at some point in time. We currently have a bot that I just started that's running on Nike. That bot is gonna show up at the top. For every bot, you have four icons when it's live and three icons when it's off. So here I have the option to edit this bot. I can go in and change the webhook addresses. I can change my notification settings. The only thing I cannot change is the strategy and the time frame that the bot is running on. I can also clone this bot. So let's say I switch to another symbol and I wanna copy this exact strategy to that symbol. I can click the clone button and it will do exactly that if I want to. And I can also 
check the status of a bot. There's this little uh, view status icon that if I click on, it'll tell me what's going on with that bot. And if I go down to other bots and look at them, when they had been running in the past, it'll show me what had happened in the past with that bot as well. So you'll notice there's a lot of information here. There's the date it was created, the time it was last updated, when it was stopped, when it last checked the market, its status at the time it was stopped, and the last five signals and the timestamps for those signals that it generated. Also, very important to keep in mind, in addition to this uh, uh, sidebar widget, there's now a new button at the very top called Alerts and Bots. If you have a bot that's running or a bot that used to run in the past, when you have this on, it'll show you the positions from that bot on your screen. So I'm going to go to Home Depot where I had actually run a couple different bots before, and you can see what that looks like. Right, Each bot that had run on Home Depot will get its own line item in the chart key. Right, so currently there are three that I've created on Home Depot. One is still running and has not generated any signals yet, and two are stopped from the past that I've not deleted yet. You'll notice that each bot has a color code, right? So, and the color code corresponds with the color of the entry and exit markers on the chart. So, if I want to see when my purple bot entered and exited, I can look at just the purple markers. What's really cool about this is you can do this while you run a back test as well. So we can run a strategy on this chart and we can compare that strategy to what the bot actually did and might do in the future. That allows you to overlay entry and exit markers from strategies that are live and strategies you're experimenting with to allow you to very quickly iterate and manage your strategies and do all kinds of fun stuff such as experiment with them and compare them and try to tweak them to improve them. Another thing that's very nice now is we've changed this top functionality. So it used to be that when you uh, clicked on this button, for, it used to just say alerts, it would open the menu and give you the types of alerts you can create. That menu has been moved off to a three dot menu to be consistent with the rest of the toolbar. And the button will now actually show and hide alert and bot labels from your chart. So you have a quick way to remove the alerts, remove the bot entry markers and add them to your chart with a single click here. So that's how it works. We hope you guys enjoy this feature. Please, please play with it. Let us know what you think. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please reach out. The support team's here to help you. And we're looking to make this the most powerful and flexible way for retail traders to automate just about anything you want to automate using your TrendSpider accounts. Thank you again for watching and have a wonderful day. Take care.